Welcome, Paul Hoffman, author of The Left Hand of God. Um, your novel obviously is inspired by your days in school. Um, which were the experiences which led to the story? <coughs> when I first of all started, came up with the idea of writing about the book, um, what was important to me was really to revisit the past in as vivid a way as I could. <coughs> And it's unusual, obviously, for anyone uh, to write about their, their past. Most people never do. So I was very surprised as I started to write. Things that happened I had long ago forgotten about began to come back in a very, very fresh way as if they had happened yesterday. And because they were so unusual, um, the more I wrote, the stranger and stranger it seemed. And um, in some ways, the more horrifying because my background was of a very extreme religious order with lots of very, very odd ideas. But it was only as I came back to write about them that I realized just how very odd they were. So as I wrote, the book became in a way more realistic because it was true, but also stranger as I began to realize that um, these things actually happen that uh, once you start to look at the world in a certain way, there is no such thing as a strange fantasy novel. The world is strange enough. And uh, in a few sentences, uh, what is the novel about? In a way, it's a, a kind of a universal journey. Um, you could say that in many fantasy books or any other kind of books, they're about journeys, you moving from one place where you're very ignorant to another place and you gain experience. And that doesn't seem like a very original um, notion. The thing is, it's the journey everybody has to make. And if you can talk about that in a way that's striking, then it will be both very different because everybody's experiences are different. But also, it will, hopefully, it will compel them because it's the human journey. And it's a journey that we make overall in our lives, but also um, as children, no matter who we are. We're moving from our parents to our first school, and there we confront all sorts of terrifying things. And then when we get to the top of that, then we moved on to another school. Then we move on again. So these journeys into ever more frightening unusual circumstances where we don't know what's happening are simply the common experience of everyone all the time. And I suppose what audiences are looking for is, can you say this in a new way? It's about a 14-year-old, so it must be for 14-year-olds. I think what's different about this book is that it simply says a 14-year-old's experience of life can be dramatic in a way that is true of everyone, not just because we've all been 14, but because they can be experiencing things that are simply crucial, great dramas, where they're confronting the world in a way that isn't less important. The crisis of a 14-year-old and the crisis of a middle-aged man are the same thing. Nobody reads Hamlet or Mephistopheles um, because it's about middle-aged men. They read it because they feel it's somehow common to everyone. But what's unusual, and there are only a very few books in the world that say the drama of a child is as important as the drama of, as an adult. And I, if you like, by writing the book, I was trying to say, um, if a child never read this, it in a sense wouldn't matter. Every 50-year-old who reads this is reading about um, themselves just as if they are reading Hamlet or if they are reading Faust. I have led a, an astonishingly interesting life, I'm sorry to say. And when I came to write this, the fact that so many different and strange and contradictory things had happened to me, there was no easy, realistic way of writing this, but there was so much 
stuff, and it was so strange. I, I didn't think that I could write about it in, in just one book. I always wanted to write something quite expansive and felt that I could easily fill a novel with um, things that would keep people excited.